All right, so now we can graph the ATC, AVC, MC, MR, and price in a monopoly market. We can go ahead and draw the graph as such. What we're going to have on the x-axis, the quantity, in this, in this case of vehicles, being washed. One vehicle, two, three, four, and five vehicles. Now on the y-axis, we can also again look at what we have. And just based on what we see, we could put perhaps maybe 20, even 30, even 40, even 50 as a max value. Uh, I'm going to put $50 in this case as a max value on the y-axis. That's 50. This becomes 25. And so on. So now we can go ahead and graph ATC, ABC, MC, and MR. Now here we have ATC. I'll be using a blue pen. 1, 20, 2, 12, 50, 3, 10, 6, 7, 4, 10, and 5, 12. And here we have, once again, our average total costs labeled ATC. Next, we are going to graph AVC. We have 1 and 10 somewhere here, 2 and 5, 3, I'm sorry, 2 and 750. Next, we're gonna graph AVC. We have one and 10, somewhere there. Two and 7.5, somewhere there. Three, 7.33. Four, 7.50. And five at $10. So here we have our AVC. Once again, AVC cannot be above ATC because AVC plus AFC gives us ATC. Once we have AVC graph, we can now move into MC. 1, 10, 2, 5, 3, 7, 4, 8, and 5, 20. Somewhere around there our marginal cost curve, MC. Now, in the other video when we showed the perfectly competitive market, we saw MR, which is equal to price, as a horizontal line. But now notice that price does not equal MR. And that's why we have to draw both the MR and price separately on our graph. So now we can go ahead and draw our MR. So here we have 1 and 40, 1 and 40, somewhere there, 2 and 20, 3 and 15, 4 and 5, Around here and 5 and negative 30 which would be somewhere in quadrant 4 so I could draw the MR as such like so MR and now we can go ahead and draw price so now we can go ahead and graph the price in this case, we have 0 and 50 as such, 1 and 40, 2 and 30, 3 and 25, 4 and 20, 5 and 10, somewhere around here. and draw our demand curve. Put here price, which is the demand curve. So again, like most companies, they are trying to find where they can maximize profit, what we call the profit maximization point. 
And again, this is not how much they can make, but at the last unit of production, how much profit they can make before marginal cost exceeds marginal revenue. So it's the last point to make profit. And this is where MR equals MC. So notice how we can also see on our graph, we have MR in green and MC in red. And it seems as if that both MR and MC intersect somewhere around here, based on, upon my graph. So it is hard to read because again, I don't really have the numbers on the Y axis. So I'm going to have to guess based upon my own graph. Now, if I do have this correctly, it should be at around four. Uh, perhaps it could be maybe between three and four, but I'm gonna use four in my example here. At the same time, we can also see that on the y-axis, right, we have to guess what that price would have to be. But remember, since this is a monopoly, one seller, they are a price setter, this is where the monopoly is going to produce, or in your case, wash a vehicle, but since there is a price demand curve that's separate from MR, the monopolist is going to charge a much higher price. So this is where they are going to set price. Hence the term price setter, price setter. So in the case of this monopolist, it looks to be that they are going to set price at the following point. They're going to set price what looks to be at 20 so now we can see, as we did in the previous example of the video, we can now draw this rectangular shape that looks as such. And this is going to represent the revenue of the monopolist. Again, I'm guessing on the numbers because I don't have a graph that can give me the actual number. So I'm having to guess what the X and Y axes are. In any case, the revenue length is four times a width of 20, width of 20, to give us this rectangular shape, gives us 80. Now, again, we wanna know what is the cost to operate a business? What is the cost the monopolist would have to pay? We have to find where does the vertical dotted line of profit maximization intersect with average total cost, ATC. And it looks to be at somewhere around here as well, somewhere right here. So it looks as if that if you go all the way to the y-axis, all the way to the y-axis, that is where the cost is going to be for this monopolist. So if we look at, let's say our graph, we can say this could be $10, because at four units, four, ATC is at 10. This might be 10. We now have the area of a rectangle, length of four times a width of 10. Now we have 40. So clearly, when we calculate profits, as revenue minus cost, 80 minus 40, the monopolist is able to make a lot of money in terms of profits, $40 worth. So now it makes sense for this monopolist to be able to set price, not where MC and MR intersect, but where consumers are willing to pay for this good, this product, this service, and since we do have price, the demand curve, that's separate from MR, it would make sense for the monopolist to go ahead and set price at this point here and charge customers $20.